So this is Timothy Hansen's Black Ops 4 Zombies was a mess. I'm curious to see what Timothy says. Because like I said, chat, I believe Timothy was the only Zombies YouTuber to ever make some sort of commotion after BO4. Well, here we are. Here we are. We've analyzed nearly every Treyarch Zombies game. It started off with Bare Bones World at War, True. then evolved into the significantly better Black Ops, True. then slipped into a quick identity crisis with the equally spectacular and depressing Black Shout Ops 2, until the mode's peak was reached with a nearly flawless, the peak! expansive Black Ops 3. This, of course, brings us to Black Ops 4. Chat, will zombies ever peak again? Yes or no, dude? Will it peak? Just I don't set know, to dude. release on October 12th, 2018. Dude. Over a year since the debut of Zombies know. Chronicles. Now, the fact that I've already labeled BO3 as the absolute peak is really a tell that things only go downhill from here, which so they far. unfortunately very much do. Yes, this game has this some good, don't get me wrong, and we're actually going to touch upon those things instead of just outright shitting on the game like I did in that. <laughs> years ago. But I'll warn you in advance, oh, yeah. there's going to be a lot of negativity because this game exudes negativity far true. greater than any of its peers. Unfortunately, I'll also preface that this is total the truth. dismantling with the fact that in a vacuum, devoid of any context, this is a quality game. And I mean it. There's plenty of fun and good times. That is true. It's also just BF4 had expectations that were insane. And I don't think those expectations will ever be as big for another Zombies game like it w they were for BO4. To be had. It's when context is injected, and when compared yeah. to its peers, yeah. most notably its direct predecessor, BO3, that you start to piece together how truly disappointing this game was relative to, to its high BO3. expectations, yeah. and how much of a mess Black Ops 4 Zombies is. This is true. I actually want to start off with this clip of Lex reacting to my previous analysis on BO3 of all things. I thought he made an interesting point that I thought would be a perfect- Damn, I did not even realize it in this video. Chat, what the fuck am I gonna say? Chat, you know what's funny? I never remember what I say. I ne <laughs> So I literally, I'm so curious to hear what the fuck I'm gonna say here. So chat, it's Lex from America versus Lex from Canada over here. Who do you think is going to give the bigger W? Let's see. Let's Perfect see way it. to open up this video. I don't think Revelations was supposed to exist. Oh, he's talking about what I was saying about BL3 uh, with Rev, which is true. What a great point. Because literally, this is literally the whole point of this game. I don't think people understand that, but it's literally the point. I literally talked to Jason Waddell about it, chat. It's the point of the game. Trust me, dude. Here's why. Black Ops 4 was exist was a game to exist to literally release the great war map and it never happened which means black ops 4 this is guy's a filler bitten. Game. it is a this filler guy's game. If the whole purpose was for the great war map to come out and it didn't come out it's filler it serves no purpose which is why chat in some other different timeline that we live in dlc 4 i mean canadian lex is spinning was right the now, great yeah. war map canadian and lex it probably could have been one of the greatest zombies maps of all time and bo4 was only chaos in other words the reason why bo4 ever existed in the first place spin, was to extend chat. the black ops series lifespan just a bit further with one more game because really if they can I'm they? so glad, Timmy, that you started off this video with that because literally when you look back at BO4 with that mindset from the way that the developers were creating it changes the whole aspect of the entire game. It literally does. Because then you fully realize that, yeah, the story was just literally drawn up. And honestly, chat, one in the chat, if you remember, me and Milo getting so much backlash for what we said about BO4 because there was a group of people on Twitter that literally were like, you're not giving the game a chance. And literally you look back at those people now and they're like, dude, they didn't even do what they wanted to do on the game. What do you mean we're not giving it a chance, man? It's so bad. Another year of Call of Duty is another year of bank, baby. They can sell Black Ops with ease. It could be Black Ops 6, 7, 8, however fucking far into the future they're willing to go. Your life is still <laughs> I know, fine. right? Try it. True. It's a vicious cycle of misery I used to participate in. <coughs> what the fuck is... <coughs> 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 
on an annual basis until I finally drew the line in the Get this off the screen. Vanguard. Get this off which the turned screen. out to be a great decision given it's legit the worst COD ever. So, with potentially billions of more dollars to gain, Activision, not so much screen. Treyarch, important decision chat, there. can I prove to you something? Chat, can I prove to you something? One in the chat if I can prove to you something. This is something that I think people don't understand. So chat, I'm on the homepage of Twitch, right? I got Black Ops pulled up here. What I find so interesting is whenever you go to an old game, so like Black Ops 3, first stream is somebody playing zombies. Zombies, 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 right? So obviously zombies was a really great pick, right? For Black Ops 3. But this is what I find is so interesting. When you go to Black Ops 4, Look what it isn't. It's blackout. This is a zombie stream, which is very rare, I find. But look, COD MP, competitive, blackout, 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 blackout. So it's... It goes to show that, in my opinion, this game was remembered for its BR more than zombies. And I just see that every single day with literally the people that are playing Twitch on this game section right now. So I don't know. I thought I wanted to make that point because a lot of people think that like bo4 zombies is hella underrated i think it is but it's also like it's wild that the game was remembered more for blackout than all of black ops 4 zombies that's insane to me that's set insane their to sights me. on the production of bo4 to me. which ended up shafting the production of revelations which as we know ended up being quite possibly the most underwhelming zombies map ever given the build-up and expectations given what should have been insane the great apothic and war instead that epic conclusion gets carelessly tossed into deal. Now look at Vanguard. No, 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 no. Vanguard is a completely different story. Nobody knows Vanguard zombies exist. On Twitch. Jack, can we go to Twitch and see how long is it going to take for us to find Vanguard? We're not going to find this. We're not going to find this, dude. It's not. The Where is it? Dude, there's not a single homie playing zombies. There's not a single homie playing zombies. So, yeah, I mean, dude, that's also a very fair point to to, to bring out for sure. That's hilarious. The animated cutscene. And that's the other thing. That is so All of their funny. production went towards the future, yet they couldn't even match the high quality CGI cutscenes BO3 did. Wasn't the payoff of an anticlimactic revelation supposed to at least be elite cutscenes for the next game? I just don't get it. On one hand, there were whisperings of budget cuts and staff cuts. Chat, what zombies map killed the budget for BO4? I'm trying to think. Was it a specific zombies map or was it just the launch? Maybe it was, I think honestly, maybe it was just the launch. It's during the production. Maybe but again, Voyage. in theory, they should have been locked and loaded towards BO4 given they shortchanged BO3. Yeah, it could have literally just been the launch. Out. I don't think it was think actually a specific explanation map, to could be, be Blackout, the new Battle Royale I agree. that launched with this I agree. Game. We literally it just looked at it. a lot of the devs' attention away. So much so that the Blackout is what never the saw the light of day. So it's highly possible that Blackout's production negatively impacted like chat, zombies too. This is my question to you. If you were to go back to Black Ops 4 right now, would you play Blackout or would you play BO4 Zombies? To be honest, if I had to choose, I'd probably play Blackout and just enjoy Blackout and see how it goes, to be honest. Like, would I play Zombies right now? Probably not. I haven't played Blackout in a while, so that's the thing. Like, Blackout is literally more of a competitor than a lot of other shit on Zombies. Whatever the case wild. may be, Zombies production felt compromised, not only at the end of BO3, 100%, BO4, 100%, which gave this game a huge disadvantage from the beginning. Yep. Usually yeah. I analyze each map one by one, but this video is <laughs> going to naturally deviate from that, given there the are voyage, four maps no at launch. Mega lull. Let me repeat. Four maps. Chat. Usually we only get one or Fuck them for thinking they could have done four maps at launch. I'm just going to say it. Because the one thing I brought up to Blendell when I was talking to him about this game, I was like, how are we going to Easter egg hunt? Like, how is that going to happen? What is going to happen with the YouTubers trying to find Easter egg content? And all it was was literally, oh, we did the nine Easter egg. I spent the whole time doing the nine Easter egg. Oh, Voyager's done. Oh, oh, Blood of the Dead's done. Oh, okay. And then that was it. The whole content that they were building up years for was gone in literally a week. That's like the biggest L in game content creation I've ever heard of. That's chat put in L. That is disgusting. There too, but this game more Hated than doubled it. that. This Hated. was all very exciting at first because Hated, on paper, man. four maps is greater than one. There's simply more content, which is true upon first glance until you begin to see the lasting effects of it, starting with community division. 
The zombies community, comprised of you, the very person watching this, playing the Ooh. games, is usually joined at the hip Ooh. with one, maybe two maps to start off with. Not only providing a bigger sense of unity, but clearly establishing exactly which experience to focus on and what direction the game is moving in. For example, with BO3's launch, we were Like, shot. what was the first zombies map you played on BO4? I think for me, I think it was nine, and then it was blood for me. But, like, everybody is this different, you know? It's like, they did that on purpose, though. It's just like, I wish they would have been like, okay, nine for the first week, voyage for the second week, blood for the third week, and then classified as the last week. That would have been just, oh, just so much better. Shadows of Evil, trying to learn the ropes and complete the Easter egg, which tied the whole community together in a clear direction. Sure, people were also playing the giant, but that was a direct remaster. So it's something True. we'd already experienced, therefore not really taking away from Shadows. The duality of those two maps is healthy for the game, but the way BO4 did it felt overwhelming and confusing. The four base I maps... also feel like remastering 5 was such a ballsy decision still looking back. Because it's like, dude, 5 was not a loved map by most people. That's the other thing. 5 was just like... It was just another map. And they were like, dude, we're going to remaster it. And we're like... I remember zombie YouTubers are like, really? Like, why? Why would you do this? I don't know. Maps of this game I still think it was a despair, questionable thing. Nine, Blood of the Dead, and classified as a bonus with the Black Ops Pass, which yeah. mind you cost $50 as a standalone, essentially forcing Biggest a smart person L. to buy the deluxe edition Biggest to save L. money. Like, I get it, Activision. Biggest You're L. greedy whores. But this was a bit of an overkill, especially when... And the boolean system in this game was another L. All microtransactions were L, so Activision also had a major part in this game being fucking dog-watered. L. Microtransactions. The new alternative to the perfectly functional gobblegum system are now elixirs, which can be converted from their new currency, Nebulium Plasma? It appears fine until you realize it's inflated to manipulate you into believing you're gaining more. When I you're know. Really not. Dude, the elixirs it's the are also worst just so fucking ever, lame. Bro. Not nearly as cool or as identifiable as the gum, which were instantly iconic when they debuted in BO3. It's a prime example of also, the recurring. Also, chat, Talisman's W or L, dude. I think Talismans suck. It's such an L because you just lose it after one game. And they're so hard to get in this game. Oh, I hated them. I hated game. them, to be honest. Pointless innovation. The elixirs change were fine. For the sake of change. But not I don't genuine know. Talismans were... Ugh. I'm really not lying or joking when I say that I've legit never used a single mega elixir the entire time. Because you don't have game. to on BO4. The classics are literally that OP. It's insane. It's literally insane, man. Not to mention whatever the fuck these talismans are. I legit never equip them. Just the somewhat helpful classics. It has a lot to do with me not playing it's the game so, so much true, in the first dude. place. But I also just don't respect the change and feel zero Thing is, chat, like, BO4 is for a certain type of player. That's why, like, it's for the hardcore fans that really love zombies. That's why I was so confused when this game came out. And I was like, who does this game appeal for? You have a hard version of Mob of the Dead. You have, like, five remastered. You know what I mean? It, it was just like, and then you have a whole other storyline, which is something that casuals will just not understand, you know? To use them, especially given the recharge takes an eternity. So before you even start the game up, you're already paying close to, if not $100 for a game with no campaign. Literally, and somehow literally. Even worse, even more manipulative microtransaction system. You tell me if this game has a sturdy foundation or not. Quite literally. The four yeah, maps I mean, we get that's a great launch way to divided start it. into two different stories. The familiar Ether storyline we've been following along since the very beginning, World at War with Blood of the Dead and Classified, and an entirely new and separate Chaos storyline. Chat, should Chaos have happened, yes or no? When you look back at it, like, I always ask people this, because I'm like, dude, it's interesting, right? Because I think Chaos was less celebrated than even non-Treyarch games. Just because on a whole non-Treyarch game, everyone's like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, it was just the year. But the fact that BO4 was so integral and for it to miss the mark this hard, it's interesting. I personally don't think they should have split it up into two, but I don't know. Led by Voyage of Despair and Nine. Technically speaking, Voyage of Despair is map number one of this game, so we're technically starting- Like I said, chat, they should have just went Great War all out with BO3 right at the end. 
and then BO4 should have just been all chaos if they wanted to try something new. Because then BO4 would have still been written off, but then it would have been like, oh, we still have the Ether storyline for Cold War. You know what I mean? It would have been... It would have been way better, in my opinion. BO4 with chaos. Yes, literal chaos, but from here on out, I'll be referring to the chaos storyline as chaos. Things open up in the early 20th century with the disappearance of a guy named Alistair Rhodes, who long story short... Ali A! Like, chat, isn't it so funny that nobody gave a shit about this character that we just called him Ali A? <laughs> I don't get that. Hello, hello, Red, how are you? But yeah, this is this is my homie Ali A. This is all I know, dude. He's in Fortnite now. Order. Essentially the Illuminati, it looks like. So they naturally kidnap him <laughs> to keep this secret. The cult has possession of what's called the Sentinel Artifacts. The Almighty Sentinel Artifacts, which are capable thing of... Thing is, though, chat, we will never under understand the story truly because we just don't understand it. It's not like Ether Zombies. It's a whole other different thing. So... A whole lot, I mean, including being able to instantly start a zombie apocalypse. How are you? Magic, you hungry, right? After his disappearance, his daughter Scarlet know, takes right? initiative and leads a group of his closest allies to save him and figure out what the fuck's going on, including chemist Stanton Shaw, spy Diego Nicali, and local strong- Chat, here's a question I have. Are we not allowing premise to be the best or premise to have anything better? Because I was thinking about it, like, the Chaos crew I think is kind of shit. Like, I just looking at these four characters, I'm like, there's just nothing that interesting here, you know? But is, is it also like, are we just not allowing premise to be better? Or, or are we not allowing anything to be better than premise, you know? I just think, to be honest, these four characters suck. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know, dude. Scarlet was so fucking annoying in two out of three chaos maps dude like if you're so if you your whole character arc is just complaining about your fucking dad oh i don't know chad that's what i'm saying like is there even four characters that treyarch could make that we would like more than premise yes or no what do you guys think because i agree premise is just four stereotypes I think there is a group of four that we could make that is better than premise. I just don't know how because that task in and of itself is extremely difficult unless you're pulling from other IPs at this point in time. So I don't know. I don't know what to oh, think man, about Bruno that. Bruno Delacroix. We're taken to the Titanic. Because like chat, I don't like Victus. I'm gonna be honest. Victus is fucking garbage. I think I like Chaos more than Victus, but I just. I, it's not everything that, like chat, I've always said this, Zombies has never been a game that I've ever been gripped by in terms of the story, like maybe other than Blood of the Dead, but it's like, in terms of other shit that I've seen, like anime or like just really great movies, they can grip me in with their characters in two hours, and it's wild that Zombies cannot do that, you know, when it's literally a gripping character story. So that's why I'm just like, dude, the potential is there. I just don't know what would be the best for players in zombies now. I don't know. Yes, the Titanic of all places, in order to retrieve one of the Sentinel artifacts. So is this other guy who foolishly starts- Chat, is it insensitive that there's a zombies map made on the Titanic? Yes or no? It is, I think, in my opinion. It is a tragedy, right? Like, I don't know. Is it a weird thing to make him make a, a zombies map about? I mean, I guess not. I guess it's different, right? I don't know. It's the boat apocalypse just to quickly become so a So was it. World War II? I mean, true. Very true. I mean, that is very true. So, I mean, I guess not. Great. Now there are zombies to fight off and an Easter egg to complete. It's almost as if this is how it ends up every single zombies map. It's so repetitive. It ends with you defeating a giant ice eye in the sky and discovering that Bruno is in fact a part of the very same cult that other fool was. It's also just sad that like this was the start of chaos. Like God, what an awful start. They start from the Titanic. You have to, oh no dude. Dang Slushy just got a 20 minute, three second. Let's go boys. Was hey. indicating that he is a traitor, either betraying his cult or our crew which was a successful cliffhanger. Oh, Many didn't care for the story it. then or to this day.
And I'm very much one of those people. It just didn't quite grab my attention as well as Ether did back in the day. Still though, chat, I still do believe that there's been no zombies experience, in my honest opinion, that has gripped me as much as like a movie or an anime. I don't know, maybe you guys can disagree, but fully in terms of my aspect, I've never felt that sort of connection. The only genuine beef with the story here is the appalling lack of actual Titanic utilization. True. I mean, the tragic tale of the unsinkable Titanic is obviously its most compelling aspect, yet Voyage concludes with the ship sinking the exact same way it did in history, as if nothing happened here. What could have been an Easter egg saving the ship from sinking, for example, saving the fortunes of one of the most infamous tragedies ever, ended up being an underwhelming fetch quest that resulted in the exact same fate. Kinda boring. Dude, such a great point. It's such an L, dude. Chat, is Voyage a W or L? I, it's such an L, dude. This could have been the first Easter egg with custom AI people that you literally help. It could have been the first Easter egg where it like tells like a story throughout the Easter egg that's incredibly imper like important to the grand narrative of the Titanic, and it does nothing. It does fucking zero. That is why it's so much of an L. Boring, if you ask me. Regardless, the ending had an intriguing enough cliffhanger to keep us rolling into the other Chaos map on launch. It's literally Infection 2, dude. Nine. Literally. Named after the cult, by the way. The crew oh, takes some psychedelics, sending them to the it. cult's origins in an ancient Roman Colosseum are of course not actually there, just driven balls and experiencing it anyways. The high priest uses his Nick stick to- And it's sad that a map based on a hallucination is better than what they could have told with the Titanic. That is disgusting, Once man. again, zombify everything, Fucking and the gladiator fun begins. Our crew is released into the arena to fight waves of the undead, and come out on the other side of the Easter egg having defeated all- Dude, the map's gonna be only melee way. weapons, bro. I heard it from my dad, bro. End and so do their lives, with one of the more shocking endings out there. They snap out of it and continue on with the next map, but we'll of course get to that later. For now, this is October of 2018, and these are the two Chaos maps we've got so far. Clearly, what an embarrassment! never come close to living up to what the Ether story has True. spent the better part of a decade establishing, so it's honestly unfair to compare the two, but even with that said, the story was generally less captivating, and had a challenge chat you know what i'm just realizing zombies could have done you know the fortnite like black hole event one of the chat if you know it could you imagine if ether ended and chaos was literally went to a black hole event on zombies and chaos happened and this was the way for the premise or whatever to come back oh my god oh. somebody put me in a game studio dude it's disgusting that nothing like that happened. That would have been the biggest W hype moment of all time, bro. That would have been fire. Challenging time retaining oh. tension. As far as the maps themselves go, they really couldn't be more different from each other. On one hand, you have Voyage, regarded as one of the worst maps ever, and Nine, Very much regarded so. as one of the best. Voyage is, of Which course, is based also on crazy. a real ship, and so you're more or less recreating it rather than creating your own design with creative flexibility. Therefore, It goes to show well. great zombies maps are not made from great IRL experiences or things. Not to say the Titanic was a great experience, but like... It flow for a zombies map. Dude, it, the ship it's is enormous, so important. Way bigger than you'd initially suspect. Yet the entire inside of the ship feels extremely condensed. And we're talking Verruckt one zombie wide hallway condensed. Literally, there are also multiple literally. decks stacked on top of each other that ultimately all look the same, making distinguishing different parts of the map much harder. So Powering difficult. up these chaos maps means making your way to the Sentinel Artifact, and Pack-a-Punch on this map in particular is relatively easy, as you simply activate all four locations and move it to whichever final destination you prefer. Then it moves around every few rounds going forward. Nine had a far more unique approach to Pack-a-Punch, as you go to each respective temple, each themed uh, after God, mind you, Danu. Chad, is there even a soul in chat that likes Voyage more than uh, Nine? Like, I would be shocked if there are people like that, need, to be honest. Ra, Odin, and Zeus. I just can never understand and battle that. the current champion of said temple, claiming their head and some points after each execution. You then take the four heads and impale them in the central underground It's just temple. so much of a yes. more unique a idea and design, Along with the various too, badass themes you know? comes a straightforward design with ample space. The map is essentially just 
the central arena with the temple below that branches off into the four perks. unique temples, yeah. making it very easy to navigate. There's also a major difference in and atmosphere here. And it looks here. so Nine beautiful, has multiple, man. Wrapped together with a beautiful color scheme and lighting, whereas looks Voyage so is sort of good. just... Gray? Look, I get it. We're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean on a particularly frigid night. It's supposed to look a lot like this. But depressing is depressing. And nine isn't even it's close true. to that. You feel the grandeur of this map wash over you just as you walk. This out is why I'm saying, chat. Europe. It's not zombies. Is not about the dark settings and the fucking horror and all that garbage. That's never what it's about. It's literally just about living an immersive adventure. Full of that is it. Has a way dude. of amping you up. Whereas zombie devs just, just do just not like, understand well, that though. We're on the Titanic. There's the iceberg. Here's to sinking into a deep depression. Both maps share Literally. insufferable boss zombies, starting with this monstrosity, the Blight Father. It's that creature from the that opening That one country. scene is more interesting than everything on Voyage of Despair. One in the chat. The Blight Father coming out of this homie is this one five second scene is more interesting than everything that Voyage of Despair did. That is wild to and me. And that cocoons dude. itself in one's stomach, then bursts wild out and vomits to everywhere. Me. Among other forms of assault, like Insanity, grabbing you with its tongue and jabbing dude. you in half with its praying mantis-like forearms, you put this thing down by shooting the spores on its back and isn't necessarily easy to do so. But they don't appear frequently enough for me to mind them so Nine just much. looks it's so good. It's the catalyst good. zombies that make me want to Then it goes to Voyage and it's like, they're Ugh. everywhere all the time both on Voyage and Nine, and there are four different it. variants of them. I hate it. Lightning, fire, water, and poison. Have you ever They're had a true zombies adventure in a map? Due to Origins, DE, all the favorite maps that people love, Shadows, they're all adventures. They're literally all little mini adventures. That's why they are so loved, in my Individually opinion. weak, but collectively insufferable, as the lightning one blinds you, the poison one comes acid in your face, the fire one explodes and burns you, and the water ones don't do shit, other than make every surrounding zombie much beefier than usual. They're one of the worst I mean, ideas true. anybody at Treyarch ever had, and I genuinely hope whoever thought of them is somewhere equally frustrated as I am typing this out right now. The boss that <laughs> the voyage would be the Stoker, a giant fire demon who finds its way into the map. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, chaos enemies outside of the big bad boss at the end were big L. I'm not gonna lie. Catalyst sucked. Stoker sucked. Like, Blightfather, I mean, give or take, was kinda cool. But, dude... Oh, it's just bad. Both the quietest yet deadliest fashion imaginable. It's there to serve its stereotypical tank boss zombie yeah, role. Yeah, the chaos, are the destroyers chaos the bosses were nine, not that great. The destroyers being thick. Werewolf was cool. I liked. Giganese was cool. Vampires, not so much. And I liked the enemies on nine. So they were hit or miss, basically. Heavily armored axe throwers with a meticulous pace. And the Marauders being a slighter build, but are much quicker and much more aggressive. BL4 feels sluggish slugs. out of any more games. also yes, has zombie tigers. BL4 is the sluggish, classic most slow Call of Duty zombies game. Slightly beefier. While nine has outs in terms of movement, not zombies movement. It's like literally one of the fastest for zombies movement. Now World of War, I mean, maybe. maybe More right. boss zombies. I'd say they're higher quality and match the theme better than voyages. So there's a bit of a trade off there. The wonder weapons are also really similar. They can both be obtained via quest or through the box if the you're not Kraken, interested in dude. looking up the waffles tutorial. Voyage True. has the Kraken. It's essentially a revolving cannon with four elemental upgrades. Nine has the Death of Orion, a scorpion blaster that chains zombies together like that of the Wonderwaff and can be upgraded as well. So while the two maps do share some core elements, they end up being two totally different experiences, Nine being universally recognized as the superior one. Like I said... Chat, I didn't even think that Voyage was the first zombies map in Chaos until people from the storyline told me. I was so confused. I was like, wait, so Voyage is first and not Nine? And they were like, yep. And I was like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? That mainly has to do with the atmosphere and spacing, which Voyage, unfortunately... Chat, Kraken, W or L. Dude, Kraken for me is a big L, dude. I'm not gonna lie. I just faithful design did not like the Kraken. Whereas Nine gets total creative freedom, thus has an advantage. Nine is generally more player friendly as well, which just so words, much more just enjoyable. It doesn't suffocate the player yeah. as much as a condensed linear map like Voyage does. Very Minor true. things like challenges, traps, and extra Easter eggs also add up and make Nine more dynamic. Also, did they not play Exos? Did they not think that like after Carrier and Exo Zombies, like we would just be tired of playing on a ship map? I never like ships are bad. 
The only time a ship has ever been good in a zombies map is Call of the Dead, when it's a part of the layout of the map. Like, it's just not a good zombies map layout. For Like, it's too condensed. It's too small. What's really interesting, though, is that when the game's trailer initially came out, it was the Titanic. It was Voyage that was far more popular and anticipated. Nine was, ironically, the afterthought map, since yep. we all knew so little about it. And I'm not just saying this to jerk myself off here, but I was a part of the small group on launch playing nine above everything else. I was genuinely- I was in the even smaller group playing classified, dude. What a, what a disaster. Excited for this map going in, and its success didn't surprise me, but it seemed to surprise everyone else. It ended up quickly becoming the hidden gem yeah. of the bunch. We love nine. Before we go any further, we've got to talk about this brand new perk system Treyarch <laughs> decided to try with this game. It's pretty simple how perk colas in the past operated. You'd simply walk up to one of the machines, drink, and from there Chat, on- Chat, I think in-menu progression is terrible in zombies. Like, for BO4, it's bad. I think Cold War nailed the most that it could have, right? I think I'm okay with Cold War's progression, but dude, in-game progression in zombies is always better than out, out than in a menu. I think that is something that is so integral to zombies gameplay. But I don't know. What do you guys think about that? We're biologically enhanced. BO3 I like too. Weapon kits, gobble gums. That's cool. Invigorating. But nothing I think what more we all appreciate than that, you know? so much about the perks beyond just their helpfulness, though, is the vibrance they inject into an otherwise yep. visually dull and depressing mode. Yeah. Each perk has and its personality, own personality, man. Color scheme. Its own personality that yeah, makes attachment dude. so much easier for the players. I mean, there's a reason why the original four are, are so iconic and beloved. They They're literally in icons in our society. Dude. On top of being so damn good. Literally, Eventually, though, Treyarch literally. realized that perks like Quick Revive, Jug, Double Tap, and Speed... The perks ache. weren't the problem. They definitely were. Removing Jug. Chat, do you remember when basically zombie YouTubers went to go play BO4 early? And we literally were hit with the news. Yeah, there's no jug. And nobody knew at the time at that point. And we were just like, how do we break this news to people saying that the most iconic perk is just not in the game? You know? That's why, dude, if BO4 even had Cold War's perk system, oh my goodness. That would have been insane, bro. Okay, the first four Wild fucking perks they invented me. were being selected each and every time. But then that also goes to show, someone said Duran Fong perk system. That perk system sucks. I hate that perk system. I hate upgrading just like that, where it does like 25% extra. That shit's garbage. I, ra I would rather have the Cold War system. And we're being heavily prioritized by the players, especially since lots of maps have a four perk limit. In other words, they're crutch perks, selected not necessarily out of want, but need. Uh, but and need. so Treyarch aimed True. to fix this. I'll let Blundell explain it himself too. The problem is, is that everyone gets the same things. Mm -hmm. And so when we switched it on, we switched it on with all the normal perks, first time. And uh, we just took a survey. We had like a little survey monkey, right? We could look at it. Yeah. And uh, everyone had the same perks. And we kept on adding more and more perks in the early days. Well, that's how every, pretty much the only time I ever diverged from the the core four is mm -hmm. when I maybe got like an on the house or a right. uh, or like perkaholic. As soon as we took out certain perks, suddenly I agree, chat. I don't think the answer here was to get rid of the perks. The answer was to get rid of the perk limit. Ding 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 ding. That's the answer because we still wanted the four perks, dude. It wasn't get rid of the four perks. It was get rid of the four perk limit. The perk limit should have literally been like Cold War. No perk limit. Give us literally everything in the game. Because there's a point where it's like, dude, I want to be busted overpowered. That's what I loved about BO3, dude. And I agree. Cold War did it the best. It's just unfortunate that Cold War also suffered the worst in terms of gaming atmosphere and all that for the zombies map. So... I don't understand why their answer was remove it, though. To me, it doesn't take a fucking genius to think, yeah, maybe removing the most iconic thing of our series is a bad idea. You know? I don't know, dude. I don't get Please, that shit. When I looked at the survey, mm -hmm. everything started changing. And I was like, this is what we want. And then people then started to have their own strategies. And then to 
they had different strategies on their own than when they were friends and with mm -hmm. certain friends based on how they play. I think that was a bad way to take it because, dude, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you play. It's really not about how you play. It's it's about what is the meta. Because even with the BO4 system, there were still crutch perks that everyone would run on the new system that was not supposed to be like that. It was stamina up, it was quick revive, it was dying wish. Like almost every single run on BO4, I would always have at least one of those. So, I mean, I don't know, chat. And we're like, that's what we're after. I would ask the question of the, of the person, say, why do you want Jug? And they say, well, because I like to get to high rounds. And I go, okay, well, there's multiple ways you could change the game mm -hmm. to allow you to get high rounds. You can, if you change nothing and said, I want to do normal difficulty, I just want to, I don't want to do custom mutations. I, I think this is such an L, dude. It's such an L take, dude. Because it's just not true. Nobody's like, yeah, I'm going to substitute Juggernaug. Dude, look at Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 is the direct example. We were literally just looking at a video of perma perks. People still stack the Jug perma perk with Jug. You always want the best. The meta is the best, dude. You know? I just want to play the normal game. I'd say, okay, just well, make a new meta. how do you play? I usually sit at the top of the catwalk and kill things. Right, okay, well then let's talk about... Uh, this perk. Let's put this perk in your slot. Any catwalk lovers voice? That's gonna be good My for you. My catwalk lovers, we love you. Effect. And they could tailor their loadouts to yeah. what? So essentially so by removing love. Juggernaug and removing some of those beloved perks, you've given more freedom to the player. Yes. This new system came in the form of pr F's in the chat for that take. Just so sad listening to that back because it's so wrong. It's just so wrong. Three selected perks meaning you pick the four you want before the game even begins. Also, I hate that. I hate that, that there were only ever four god statues or perks or whatever. Hated that shit. It just, it made it feel so, ugh, you know? You're set with said perks for the entirety of the game. This instantly raises a problem, however, as it disables you from being able to down in-game and change your mind. Yep. If you ever down with a full set of perks and decide, you know what, I kind of want to switch things up. I'd like to try a different strategy that would prevent me. That's the other thing. It literally actually, for the problem they were trying to solve, it literally restricted more perks. Because then it just went back to BO3 and being, okay, just get the elixirs to get all the other perks. I just hated it, dude. Hated Be that from, shit. You know, dying again. Yeah, so is literally everyone with a brain that's ever played this mode. And so this cookie cutter format is already a problem. Yeah, it's a whole a problem. Of more to come. Yeah. It boxes you in. So we only get four and we can't ever change our mind when we start. Now let's take a glance at these perks. It looks like we've got some returning ones like Mule Kick, Stamina Up, and Quick Revive, which actually loses its solo ability. Gets... It's just the thing is, chat, I know BO4 was made from a purely mechanic based point rather than an iconicism point. And that was also what killed this game. They never thought for one second that why removing something that is so popular like Jug could have been a bad idea. It's just like, no, don't remove it. Just add to it. That's what every single game does. Perma perks added that extra layer into Jug. BO3 added masks and stuff for health. BO4, we take Jug away. That's why I'll never forget all of us zombies YouTubers when we knew this information. We were trying to tell people, and it was just like, how do we do this? <laughs> you know, like, what do Given we the do? Implementation of self revives by default. It doesn't no, make folks, any sense. That's not the only perk that carried half of its identity into this game. We also have Deadshot. Fuck Dealer, Deadshot. Me and my homies hate Deadshot. And PhD Slider, which are all renamed for God knows why. There's actually quite a lengthy list of entirely new perks, though, too. Include Chat, could you imagine if Banana Colada was on here? I could have, dude. Including could've time slip, me. which speeds could've up all me. recharges. Death perception. Iconicism point, bro, what does that even mean? I mean, do you know it? Most people from COD Zombies know Jug, Speed Cola, Quick Revive, Double Tap <clears throat> from the older games. They know the Ray Gun. They know the Thunder Gun. They know the Wonder Wolf, right? That is what Iconicism is. And when you get rid of that, you're literally getting rid of the soul of your game. Which is exactly what BO4 is. It's soulless. Allowing you to see zombies through walls. Dying Wish. Essentially, quick revive solo ability. Stone Cold Stronghold. I can't believe Like, the thing is, is if you don't understand that what made zombies so iconic, you would like BO4 because it's just good from a gameplay mechanic aspect, but not even really. 
because as you as we're talking about the perk system is flawed delight bandolier bandit the ultimate ammo restock perk victorious tortoise enhancing your shield's power i and it goes back to the argument chat balance in zombies is stupid i hope they stop with that bullshit immediately there should never be patch notes for guns and shit for zombies it should literally just be we buff this we added this done it's a it's about being overpowered the zombies are not supposed to have a fair chance man significantly winter's whale an inferior version it's of a Winter pve Wine. game mode and lastly like, what are you sauce. talking about a randomly generated perk like that of the wonder fizz machine adding a fun unpredictable dynamic to the game four other perks were also added with each dlc including ethereal razor chat is there somebody in the chat that doesn't know one of these four perks i'm i'm using this to prove a point do you guys know all four of these perks and look at chat i don't even know any of them how can they have fucked up so bad, dude? The it ultimate is melee so perk, sad. Zom shell and electric orb. Like, chat, if you were to tell me after BL3 that this game would have happened and it would have fucked up this bad, I actually would not believe you. Slow zombies down. The Blood potential is there. It's just not as well, though. And blaze phase. Let's not talk about that one. You see all these new perks and you think to yourself, holy shit, BO3 only added one new it's perk. It's too much, they went dude. above and beyond. Until you quickly realize that every single one of those perks float around the line of mediocrity together. Not exactly. being outstanding in a negative or positive way. Exactly. And that's what fucking ruined the game. Because everyone's like, okay, what's the meta? Like, chat, literally, that's what I figured. That's literally... Jason Modell saw me open up the perk system for the first time ever. I skipped through all the fucking text. He's like, you should have read that. I skipped through all the fucking text and literally tried to figure out what's the meta. Because that is everything that everybody cared about, and I was exactly right, dude. What do I mean? What is the meta? Well, in previous games, we got a healthy assortment of both really good and really bad perks. A stark contrast between must-haves like Jug and must-never-touches like Who's Who and Tombstone. Exactly. With some middle-of-the-road perks like Electric Cherry, for example, in the fold as well. In BO4, however, all of the perks are middle of the road, none being in one extremity or the other. Generally- And if they are, it's because it's either a modifier thing that it does that's insanely overpowered, or you're trying to do a specific thing for a specific strat. Dilutes things and makes it un- Jason was pressed that you did that 110%. Clear as to what's necessary or not. Of course, this was Treyarch's goal, as they wanted to eliminate that clear hierarchy for the sake of parity, but they unfortunately didn't even end up solving the crutch perk issue. Treyarch had this feeble hope of players picking a new set of perks every single time they played, when in all reality, it goes against our human nature- Chat, Cold War perk system or BO4? And sticking to I it. think Cold War- For example, solved the problem the more than bo4 nearly every time I literally play, stamina up and dying it solved wish, the problem more than bo4 did. being somewhat flexible so in all reality they didn't really eliminate the crutch perk problem rather marginally reduced it at the cost of reducing the whole system to a communist-like state of mediocrity literally Where that's such a great position go? Quick Revive was replaced with Self Revives. Speed Cola is obtained by having all four of your perks. Double Tap is obtained by upgrading your gun five. Let me repeat, five. Fuck no, baby. Hell no. Such a ass cheek system, dude. Fucking times costing a- Any time, chat, the only game, hear me out here, chat. The only game that did double pack a bunch perfectly, in my opinion, is IW Zombies. That was perfect. They added new features to the gun, and you would double pack a bunch it, and it would be better, right? Cold War, I like too, but I just dislike how it costs so much so that you only ever end up using one gun, basically, which falls under that meta aspect. But IW did double pack so good. BO3, you could argue, is too OP with attack, like, the alternate ammo types. And then BO2 is just attachments, right? So it's like, there were obviously problems, but, dude, IW did such a good job with it, dude. I fucking hate Black Ops 4s as well. It's so annoying to sit at the PAP for, like, eight hours just putting the same weapon in five times. It makes no sense, dude. A total of 15,000 points and lots of citations. So, so and Jug annoying. is simply given to the player right off the bat with 200 default HP at spawn. The Jug replacement proves to be the most damning of them all as it kills natural game progression. 
you no longer spawn in with a two hit down, walking on eggshells until you grab True. the almighty jug. Now it's a birthright True. that removes any real fear or challenge you're supposed to face early in the game. You're essentially a god with all of that health and that OP specialist you also get, which is pretty much- I do like OP stuff, chat, but there's a way to make OP stuff fun and not fucking boring as hell. Because in every Call of Duty Zombies game, there's something OP. It's just the way the game works. But it's like in this game, it's so true. There's zero progression for your OP, right? You just spawn in with the best. You spawn in with the best weapon you're going to be using all game, which is your specialist weapon. Nothing in the game beats the specialist weapon other than a rocket launcher. Which makes no sense. That makes no sense, dude. Wonder weapon. Real quick on those specialists. There are eight of them in total. Four chaos and four ether. They each have their own unique abilities. Don't get me wrong. I, I think they're all awesome. But like I said, it works hand in hand with the health boost to kill natural game progression. True. As you no longer have to earn True. it via quest. It's handed to you when the game begins. Same thing goes for the equipment, which you also choose before the game even begins. OP armory and elixir systems double and triple down on this, beating this game down to a mindless pulp the second you enter the game. As you can legit start with an SMG or shotgun with a myriad of attachments. Which I think Cold War did great just because ARs and SMGs now in the game are basically all kind of shit. Which I guess is brings up a problem of like a lot of guns in Cold War just suck inherently. And they're just not that great. So it makes you wonder, like, is there a solve to this system? Chat, would you rather have the Cold War gun system or the Black Ops 3 gun system? Hmm. I would like to have something like a mixture of BO3 and Infinite Warfare. Something like that. Because I think Cold War, like, yes, Cold War is super meta-based compared to BO3. BL3 is meta based, but anything can be the meta in BL3, which is why it's more fun to go that route, you know? Back to the perks system. Well, I don't know. These pre selected perks are placed in the same four lifeless machines. True. And although you have the advantage of being able to choose where your perks go, it removes the personality and life that the original machines provided. But the yeah, starting with the pistol the is iconic as vibrancy. well. All of it. I agree they I should bring that the back. New modifiers, which enhances your fourth perk slot. Like, chat, could they not have made create? a class like a loadout drop like warzone is i'm shocked that it's not like that to be quite honest why can't you always just start with one pistol and literally just work to get your loadout drop and get your class i mean that's literally the simplest way to add that back but it's not nearly it be something like that absolute you know? catastrophe that is the bo4 perk system it set out to eliminate what wasn't even really a huge problem and in the process it not only didn't fix it but made everything else about it worse on top of all of that, take a look at this HUD. It's fucking abysmal. HUDs of the past were so clean and only displayed what was absolutely necessary. But in this game... It's also funny, chat, because even to this day, I still wake up to tweets saying zombie YouTubers were the reason Black Ops 4 failed. Chat, you're telling me we were the reason Black Ops 4 failed? When I remember pre-recorded footage of the game came out before it came out, and everyone could not stop shitting on the HUD. We were not the fucking problem, chat. We were not the fucking problem. Everybody shits on zombie YouTubers. And then, like, literally, I've literally seen it with my own eyes that it was not us. I remember when footage came out and motherfuckers were dogging on the HUD. We had absolutely no say on that. But I remember literally Twitter almost killed this game pre-launch solely because of the HUD, man. So it's like, I don't even know how people can make that fucking argument, dude. It's disgusting to me. It's like, dude, the fact that you think that zombie YouTubers have that big of an influence when we probably only, like, have a traction of, like, 1% of people who basically play these games is insane to me. Insane. It's mind-boggling. You see too much. I could have removed half the shit on here and minimized the rest to make it look way slicker than it does now. It's a major eyesore in this game. I can't ignore it. I could go on and on about other awful changes BO4 made, like the new damage-based perk system that turns all guns into pea shooters. Awful. Which Cold War took? I don't know how I feel about that, chat. I do agree. I think the BO3 point system, the old point system, one shot is 10 points. Headshot is 100 points, melee is 130 points, a kill is 50 points, is the way to go, still. 
I still believe, still do believe that, but Cold War, I don't know, dude. Zombie spawns, increasingly expensive shield replenishment. Okay, fine. I'll tell you one thing, I hate the outbreak point system. Hate that shit. There. Do not like that. As if an entirely new timeline wasn't challenging enough to follow, the Ether storyline continues chugging along, despite having should have ended with the Great F's War. That's the chat, boys. Our first Ether map is Blood of the Dead. Sounds eerily similar to a previous masterpiece. One of the most highly anticipated remakes of all time debuts a half decade after Mob of the Dead's original release back in 2013, which as we all know is one of the GOATs and is tied with Der Anfang as my personal favorite. Der Eisendrak, I didn't actually buy Vanguard, so don't expect an analysis of it. My analysis is that it's not worth buying. I couldn't have been more excited Ooh, for the Let's go, Timothy! Chills. Gave Let's us all go. Chills. Don't try to hide it. You were super excited. That's for what it I love too. to hear, dude. You saw the fellas strutting through Alcatraz. It looked like the greatest crossover ever was brewing between our OGs and the Rock, previously occupied by these dude. OGs. Also, the beginning trailer for Blood and its song. Oh, this map. So, like we discussed earlier, lots of the production that should have been gauged towards properly concluding Black Ops 3 was relocated to this very map. And so that naturally raises the expectations on top of the high bar that already exists. You can probably tell where I'm going with this. Blood of the Dead ended up ironically being one of the most disappointing maps ever. And it has everything to do with BO4. I think it is the most disappointing zombies map ever. Maybe, I, is it more disappointing than Voyage? I would say so. Because it was living up to mob, dude. Overhated, I'm all... I disagree, dude. I think blood is foul, dude. Zombie YouTubers kill Vanguard? Good. <laughs> Good. Nah, dude. Like, if you're making a remake to mob, you're either going to make the remake to mob, or you're going to make something better. And that's not what we got. We did not get either of those. And that is why this map is hated, dude. For its overarching theme, poor innovation changing things not for the sake of actual True. improvement rather change sake the story is really the only redeeming factor here so we can start with that but please buckle up this shit does get very confusing but you know i take pride in oversimplifying this stuff bo3 starts off with richtofen stealing the summoning key and using it to absorb the souls of all the four characters throughout the game which are then placed safely in the house as revelation occurs one thing that you may have not noticed however and that i didn't the blood of that ease e isn't that bad co-op i still think though that it is one of the worst crafted easter eggs of all time i genuinely believe that it's crazy as well because it literally takes from Garod's Easter egg layout where you do five challenges, but it's literally just because of the way the challenges are structured. It is god awful. It is so bad. Didn't mention in my analysis and of it, BO3, it really, but their quick pit stop I don't know. in between Zetsubo and It doesn't Gorod add a lot like of the blood vials interest from lab for you to Alcatraz, do the Easter egg either. Which protects the crew from being wiped from existence at the end of Revelations. Dr. Monty sends the crew back to the Great War, thus continuing the cycle. But it turns out, this isn't actually how things are supposed to pan out, as we're floored to find out that Monty was never actually on our side. He desired the same power that the Shadow Man did, and so he's also the evil one. Chat, here's how I can instantly tell you that Blood of the Dead is a bad map. Would you rather have a BL3 version of Mob of the Dead or Blood of the Dead? That's all I gotta say. That is literally all I have to say. Would you rather have a BO3 version of Mob of the Dead or Blood of the Dead? And there you go. There you go. That's all I need to say, Trap. I guess there really were no good guys. This time around, as noted in the Cronorium, things needed to be different in order to stop Monty, as this dimension skews from what would have otherwise have been a brief stop into total entrapment. The crew originally teleports out of here to Garad, followed by Revelations, but in this dimension, Brutus destroys their teleporter, trapping them in this pocket dimension fueled by all of the other damned souls on the island. The crew undergoes the events of Blood of the Dead, coming out on the other side of it all with one of the most profound- Chat, do you think that custom zombies on BO3 killed BO4 as well? Because I also remember pre-BO4, customs on BO3 were hitting an amazing level of quality, dude. And I feel like just because people are like, oh, why don't we just make BO3? Because, chat, there is a Mob of the Dead custom zombies map on BO3. 
right? And it's almost all just like you hear that and you're just like, well, okay, I'm just going to go play that. I'm not going to go play Blood of the Dead. You know, <laughs> like it's wild. So, I mean, I don't know. And confusing Easter egg endings out there. Somehow, the Richtofen that had experienced Karadin Revelations after this was pinned here in a cryo chamber. Knowing he needs to put an end to the cycle here and now, he disposes of the warden and frees the very soul. I don't think it matters because most people like console. Very true. Ceasing I mean, existence. that's such a great point. Not before the Richtofen we walked in here with is disposed of himself, completely erasing the end of BO3 and opening up a new one with Nikolai's soul still being intact since we never took it in Stalingrad with a new Rick GK didn't side, happen the no dude Rick not the best zombies map dude with them die one of the saddest deaths in video game history well at least from the player's perspective these guys actually didn't seem to care all that much which is a little I less mean, surprising true. when you realize the amount of shit Rick off and has dragged them through all of it life-threatening it hit you it's really I know because this story point basically says that after GK they were way more friendly with each other I don't know, dude. I don't know if GK made that much of a difference for them to be like, yeah, we're just going to leave you here in the dust. I don't know, dude. Significantly harder, though, given we knew I'm not, Primus Richtofen had I'm not achieved. fully All understanding of, of everything the still site, in the story. The conquered shadows, the bullet he put through his head but in did the he die? and the lives of his closest I allies he know. had to take. All of that hard work is now for naught as his life's mission abruptly and sadly ends, and in quite shocking fashion, as he sucked completely dry of his he blood. He sucked! His life. It He's got sucked! Sad. It was like losing a friend. The crew had just begun to grow closer, as they really only got had sucked another, dry, and truly dude. understood each other's Sucked pain. down away, dry, dude. No one will even remember him. This it had to be his blood sucked. to break the cycle, and while he understood that, it was a fate he found difficult to accept. This one yes, got did we. sucked. The revised crew teleport from this collapsing dimension into the events of the second Ether map, Classified, which we'll of course touch upon after this Blood of the Dead bit. Blood of the Dead storytelling, though not the cleanest and most decisive, is not the problem with this map. It really all falls on the gameplay and how little it did to enhance what was already essentially a- Chat, like, look at this game. How does this look worse than Mob of the Dead? Do you see what I'm seeing? Like, it's just like, this looks like a worse version of Mob of the Dead. It's not even the HUD. Like, chat, not even the HUD. Just look at the graphic quality of the map. It's like, dude, it literally looks like it came out before Mob of the Dead. I, uh, like, BO4 has this very strange texture look to it that I don't understand to this day, dude. Flawless Mob of the Dead. I will first clarify the fact that Blood of the Dead is not your it stereotypical, looks unloaded. I agree, fully dude. faithful remaster like those of Zombies Chronicles. Rather, a reimagined edition of the map. A it looks worse than Black Ops 2. It really but a does. Reimagine, like in this case, is a revised edition. It's expanded upon with major design changes, including some newly accessible areas of the island, making it an entirely new experience. With that being said, let's take a glance at the key differences in design here. The best part of Mob of the Dead, the Golden Gate Bridge, is completely removed. The I don't know who fucking did that at Treyarch, to be honest, but chat, that was the biggest L, I think, about this map. Because I remember when this map came out, everyone was like, oh, did you get the Golden Gate Bridge? Did you get the Golden Gate Bridge? It doesn't even exist. Inconveniently Dude, displacing like, Pack-a-Punch into three separate locations. Dumb idea was that? The opens up, providing two distinct segments of the map. The newer part where you spawn and the classic mob part of the island with a deadly catwalk in between while this provides you with more space like that's got to be the biggest L of blood of the space, dead as you typically make your way to the main no part of the island golden gate bridge never turn back other than the first of now two power switches thanks for that also by the way there's no compelling reason to ever go back in that direction which is the biggest issue with such a linear map the previously True. sectioned off warden's house opens up as well which I'd say adds real value. Of I do like did. the warden's house. It's just sort of. More it's mainly for the story. Not only were it's the mainly for story. Of the map removed and That's really all it is. Useless space, but the seamless flow mob once had is now completely. Severed. Like Black Ops little... Four, in my opinion, was the game where they realized you don't have to make everything ultra realistic because they. This is the problem with Blood. This is the problem with Voyage. They made everything too ultra realistic, and it failed because. It, you're trying to recreate something that's not a zombies map. You take something that's realistic and then make it a zombies map, right?
We do not understand. No longer able to loop around the whole place. Now you've got to use these stupid fucking teleporters and make anything. I know, work. dude. So the new design sucks. What yeah. else does? I'd say having to tediously absorb souls one by one with the shield to charge shit around the map is Very somehow true. even more cumbersome to obtain Hell's Retriever and Redeemer that's totally disincentivized anyways because you only get one equipment slot and the one you get by default when you spawn in is already better. And the fact that pretty much everything that made Mob unique either negatively modified or gone altogether. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love- Also, whoever thought of one equipment slot in Black Ops 4 should be- literally like questioned why why would you just take a whole slot away of fun different shit just why it makes zero sense it does it literally makes off. zero sense until it became clear that the original zero and their story zero understanding was separated it from the pack i love the returning blunder get and its new magma upgrade but that and the painfully predictable boss zombie they were literally just like oh, we're going to so remove fun creativity let's the remove the tactical well, grenade faithful for to fun lots of what mob was but not necessarily the right components which caused the most hyped remake ever to fall well BO4 short BO4 looks great on PC but dude most people have played it on console like this and it looks trash After the gut wrenching close out to blood of the dead the crew teleports to groom lake nevada which sounds familiar because it's where we spawned in all of those years playing Moon. If you recall how that map ended, Richtofen swapped souls with Samantha, and the crew was stranded there after the rockets destroyed Earth. After Maxis is ending and buried, however, he saves Samantha's soul from Richtofen's body as the Richtofen he zombified swoops in and hands it back to himself. The most pointless cutscene in all of zombies is this one. It's classified. Also goes to show that classified did not need to exist. Because this per this cutscene serves literally zero purpose now that the Great War of Zombies map does not exist. It serves zero purpose. The fact that they rely so it's much on so pointless. many different variants of the same character is indicative of poor storytelling, by the way. The Ultimus crew is then inadvertently teleported here from the moon and are captured as test subjects until Primus shows up and rescues them after the grueling process of getting to round 150. Seriously, what kind of- And that is the most ironic thing about Classified Chat. It is probably one of my favorite launch maps on BO4. Next to 9. That's the wildest shit about it, dude. The fourth and final launch map we receive is Classified. AKA, 5 Reimagined. AKA, the bonus AKA, who literally asked? Ass. Who? Classified is to 5 what blood is to mob. Literally, who asked? Some key design differences. In Classified's case, some new office areas and the Pack-A-Punch hangout, which actually improves what was originally a small condensed map. Unlike I'm not calling it right now, they're gonna cross over Chaos and Ether one day, that will never happen. Add, rather than subtract, include the now consistent and decisive teleporters. A genuinely I'm gonna be honest, set. I feel like the 5 remake is pointless. It is, it serves zero point. The whole game is pointless, do you understand now? Like, it's wild that like, now that they understand that BO4 is all for the Great War map, the whole game serves zero purpose. Literally zero. Of it's insane. The best map the of all time. Space. They were map for the gift of Turning what was initially an impossible high round into a far more casual, far more enjoyable map to juxtapose with the intensity of Blood. Also like Blood, the original cast of characters is replaced with the OGs, which does take away some of what makes it special and unique, but certainly isn't a bad thing either. But I miss your pudgy face, Nixon. <laughs> the only change that made me genuinely sad was the removal of the Pentagon. Theme, I know, which I same. I understand is a controversial opinion since same. many people hate him. But I, for whatever reason, appreciated the chaotic. If anything, he was such bring back that for five, face. dude. He was something we really hadn't experienced on any other map to this day. Stealing your guns is plenty of reason to dislike him, and I do. But it's more of a love-hate relationship we have. He's always bad touching me, but sometimes he does it just the right way. Plus, he rewards you nicely for killing him, and he created so many fond memories of my childhood friends and I running around the map in total panic, in stunned fear as we screamed our faces red. He's replaced with hounds on Classified, which are just the most- Another just massive L, dude. Ugh. Just such an L, dude. Predictable, safe, boring boss I zombie know. alternative ever. The devs are just like, hey, do we not feel like thinking of a new boss zombie, guys? No? Good. How the up? Like, come on. Otherwise, Literally, though, dude. I have nothing negative Literally. to say about Classified. It made genuine improvements. 
I think in large part because it didn't overthink itself like Blood. I did it like Classify though. Five's undesirable qualities and made small tweaks to make it more player friendly. And so with Blood of the Dead and the Chaos maps, Classified is the first taste of Black Ops 4 zombies we got. Like I mentioned earlier though, True. the community was so used to identifying with one or two Why do they bring back one. Nox for four Forsaken? Four with four we do different not know. Easter eggs to solve and two sets we of characters to attach ourselves to begins to look like less of a blessing and perhaps more of an overwhelming start to what it would eventually become the most disastrous zombies title ever. I mean, right off the bat, there's an identity crisis even worse than that of BO2. But at least BO2's was predicated on a transfer of power between devs. This game's doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason. We just get 2k- Well, the rhyme or reason is probably just Activision. <laughs> and I guess now people are understanding why Activision is such a shit fucking company. Chaos maps along with two ether maps with no real idea of where the game is headed. If you couldn't tell from my 30 plus minute verbal blowjob of BO3, great zombies games tend to have a clear direction and not leave the players with so many questions. True. Or at least the wrong kinds of questions. True. Like, gee, which set of characters am I supposed to invest myself in? And half the maps are remasters. So should we be expecting a game fluffed with remasters? Yes. With such a perplexing group of maps at launch, we as a community were next. Ch I never felt Honestly, one of the chat, if you remember the Dead of the Night launch, I have never felt such disgust for zombies, I think, until the Dead of the Night launch. When I just opened up Twitter one day and just saw Dead of the Night gameplay, and I was just like, oh. So there's a whole new zombies map that just literally existed. No trailer. It just, that was the first thing I ever saw of it. Just gameplay of somebody hoarding in the library in Australia or whatever. And I was like, wow. Like, I was just like, dude, that it sucks. <laughs> like, dude. Very confused as to where this game was headed. Chaos? Ether? We couldn't wait to find out. And we didn't until December 11th, 2018, when Dead of the Night released. Mind you, we usually know which map we're getting far in advance of the map's release. But for whatever reason, Treyarch didn't... Chat, even... I think they did that because people were expecting an Ether map. One in the chat if you were thinking that. Maybe that's why this shit just did not have any marketing whatsoever right at the beginning. Maybe that was their play. I, I think honestly, just such a terrible way of dealing with the community. And this is why it's so nice seeing Treyarch now actually giving a shit where they're like giving people some patch notes and shits now to read because they literally this is how Treyarch used to be zero communication here's some shit we wanted to make fuck you guys dead of the night is the literal principle for that which is why i understand why a lot of people dislike this map still because literally what an amazing map but dude, what a just terrible way to introduce the story, dude. Upload a trailer for the map, which is a much bigger deal than you'd think. With previous titles, we'd get this amazing hype trailer a few weeks in advance to build up anticipation and excitement for what's to come. I found out Dead of the Night released the day of on <laughs> Twitter. Yeah. That's a major problem. Yep. No hype, no buildup, no awareness whatsoever. Just plop. Here's the new map, guys. Just, it's especially it damning given it's DLC 1, which is far and away the most important map. Yes. As it essentially DLC makes one. Or breaks the rest of the DLC yes. season. Yes. Yes. It's a home run like exactly. Drag Drag, you've successfully bridged the yes. launch maps with the DLCs while maintaining the player's interest. If it's a complete flop like Dead of the Night, however. Which is why everybody knew with BO4 that, at, like, as soon as Dead of the Night came out, even as good of a zombies map as it is. It just didn't hit the mark, and we all knew that BO4 was fucked forever, basically, after Dead of the Night. Even though Ancient Evil was great, we just did not care. Alpha Omega brought more eyes to it than Ancient Evil, which is so sad. The game flames out right then and there, greatly diminishing the success of maps to come, which is precisely what happened. The concept of Dead of the Night is one of the most unique out there. A huge estate with a variety of cool monster bosses and fun puzzles to solve is really captivating. But not if nobody's aware of the fact that it's coming until it arrives. So right off the bat, this map is at a major disadvantage before we even discuss the actual quality of it, which really just goes to show how much of a mess things were. And don't forget folks, 
this is a triple-a company developing this game we couldn't even get the pre-existing intro cinematic like chat you know what's Google. sad when the biggest meme from this map was literally noah's house burning down from a lightning storm that is how you know that this map served literally no fucking purpose whatsoever in the grand scheme of anything dude like i'm just thinking about that now and i'm like dude that was the one meme that people actually gave a shit about. Nobody gave a shit about literally anything else out of this fucking map, dude. Well, we can advance. It's, it's just, just ridiculous. I would say the story continues on from 9, but That's Dead of the wild, Night is actually dude. a prequel to Voyage. So the Chaos maps are, ironically, chaotically, not even in chronological order, making the, the story even more difficult time. to follow. We're he taken back to the kidnapping of Alistair Rhodes as the cult ties him up in the basement of his own home during a cordial get-together. Like we talked about earlier, a guy knows too much, so they kidnapped him. Alistair's butler, Godfrey, also one of the cult members, uses the Sentinel artifact to zombify everyone but himself and three others, who just so happen to be in a safe circle at that particular moment, who solidify our crew. As the map goes on, Godfrey keeps to himself as the other three are on a quest to figure out Alistair's whereabouts. Upon the Easter egg completion, Godfrey murders the other crew members to maintain his secrecy until Scarlet shows up and puts a hole in his chest, killing him as the mansion burns down and the other cult members escape with her dad, which then of course leads to Voyage of Despair. The characters are voiced by celebrities, which is cool, but sort of the only redeeming quality they have. Oh, dude, that the night sucks. Like, the story is just shit. The story is so bad. I don't care what you say. The story in this map fucking blows. I mean... The gameplay is fun, but the story is so fucking trash. Like, chat, you know it's bad when I would tell people to load up Dead of the Night and just turn off the voice volume. If you were making that many quotes and it's just that bad where I'm like, just turn that shit off. Like, what are you doing? Is the Dead of the Night crew the worst crew in all of Call of Duty Zombies? It could literally be. It could actually be the worst crew of all of Call of Duty Zombies. I'm thinking about it now. I actually think you're right. I don't like any of them. I don't like any of them. No, Victus is? Dude, at least Victus can be interesting. And somewhat relatable. This is just like, what is this? You know? Fucking annoying. Noise. Vanguard operator? Operators don't count. I'm talking about like... Operators is a whole other thing. Too, frankly. This but I do think one only appearance, Dead of the Night might have the worst characters like of all time. A passing stone more so than a group of characters we genuinely care about. Despite the characters themselves, however... No, dude, they're... I cared about the Exo Zombie characters way more than I did about Dead of the Night. Even IW characters I cared about more. The Dead of the Night crew is gotta be one of the worst crews ever written. Like, so bad. I thought this was actually a successful setup to the rest of the Chaos story. It's at least passable. Let's True. take a look at the map itself now. As we know, it takes place in the profound, lavish Rhodes Manor. The place seems infinitely big with, of course, the main living space in the mansion, but also the ample outdoor Dead space. of the Night is actually a very small map. A lot of people don't realize it because I feel like a lot of people just have never played this map, but this map is really small. It's literally just one hub that connects four ways. That's literally it. I absolutely adore this map's atmosphere. It's one of the most unique out there. And I especially love the color scheme with the contrast between the indoor- Three ways. Yeah, not even four. Three. Forest, the mausoleum, and the laboratory. Warmth yeah, it's not even four. It's three. outdoor bits. You truly feel like you're in a game of Clue. I dare say this atmosphere is one of the most immersive zombies has ever seen. I agree. But unfortunately, those are the only flowers I have for this map. The rest of it is downhill from here. Like all the other Chaos maps, you start by activating the Sentinel Artifact, which then propels you into the Pack-a-Punch quest as you follow the clues that lead you to where the three necessary tuning forks are to unlock it. The three main puzzles are putting this ghost bitch to rest, winding up this clock, and slaying the vampire hordes. We're gonna get to these fuckboys in a minute, don't you worry. These tasks aren't so difficult to achieve, until you realize there are more parts to grab on this map than any other map that is- Chat, one in the chat if you've done the Dead of the Night Easter egg. I'm curious to hear 
if anybody's actually done this Easter egg. I'm curious. Ever existed. There's multiple parts in multiple locations for what seems uh, like a pretty healthy split, I guess. Of things to be obtained, including the shield, silver bullets, a lot of tools. Though. Don't you worry, we're gonna get to those fuckboys soon too. The steak knife. The Dude, look, at <laughs> look at this Easter. Look at this. Could you imagine delivering this to somebody and being like, dude, this is the Easter egg, do it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's literally like, it's literally like a uni- Chat, it is literally reminds me of a university poster that I did, hold on a second. They literally look the same. <laughs> That's so bad, bro. <laughs> Oh my the savage gosh. Savage Impaler, the Trap Cores, and any other miscellaneous shit I'm forgetting, which I- It looks like a university so poster. More tedious maps of the past, Dead of the Night pretty much subjects you to just walking around the perimeter of the map holding the engage button, since there's such an overwhelming amount of stuff to be accounted for, and it's not like Origins that rewards- And I think BO4 kind of was the first game that really solidified the hold X everywhere on the map. I think like BO3 did as well, but BO4 was the one where it's like, if you're not holding X on every square inch of the map, then you're not playing the map correctly, which is stupid game design. That is stupid. Some of the best wonder weapons ever. These rewards relative to how difficult it is to earn them is more like Zetsubo, but somehow even worse. Hang even on, worse though, than it Zetsubo. It gets significantly more challenging it's even worse because than Zetsubo. you're also dealing with a myriad of boss zombies on top of that. And some of the most infuriating ever at that. First and foremost are the Nosferatus, aka the vampires, whatever you want to call them, who not only show up in a ridiculously large quantity, but speed around the map and lunge at you, disorienting and damaging you. It gets even worse though, they have an even less tolerable variant, which literally hop on top of you and take you completely out of the game momentarily, which leaves you completely vulnerable and allows everything else to pile on as well. What's everything else? Let's try these giant fucking werewolves, which are admittedly really cool, but are the biggest bullet sponges of any boss zombie I can remember. Hence why you need silver bullets to take them down reasonably. They're sort of the equivalent of the Blight Fathers, except these guys are much quicker and much more aggressive. And that's of course without mentioning the regular zombies and the fiercely toxic catalyst zombies oh. that only make me want to not play the map. You're beginning to see why this map is completely and utterly overwhelming. Even for the- I hate the, this map story, to be honest. Again, again, chat. You know what's such a great story they could have told on Dead of Night? Literally the setting that it was used for. Like, chat, Nosferatu is one of the greatest, like, horror films of all time. Because it's such an interesting story. Like, they could have really played into that. But it's just not in it at all. There's just little references here and there. How do silver bullets even work? That's the thing. You would know if they actually told the Nosferatu story of why silver is better. Why there's a steak knife. You know what I mean? There's just no explanation unless you get it from outside sources, sources, which is the main problem of Dead of the Night, man. The hardest of hardcore players, let alone the casual community. I mean, if you're new to zombies and this map is your first choice, do yourself a favor, quit. If you don't play something <laughs> else, you'll never want to play- <laughs> That remind me of when you watch that Mr. Dolly JD video, and he's like, oh, are you doing this on solo? Good luck. <laughs> zombies again with this as your first impression. High rounds on this map are more chaotic than any That's other map so I can funny, remember. Dude. There's so much going on that it legitimately feels impossible at times. The Alistair's Foley one weapon is aight, but you've got to go through this confusing scavenger hunt to unlock it if you're not lucky enough to get it from the box. When upgraded yeah. to the Annihilator, it's obviously much better and has some really cool elemental abilities, but like I said, that's an entirely separate process with multiple quests sandwiched together to even get to that yeah. point. So, Dead, like I said, Dead of the Night's only a good map if you are a hardcore player and you learn the entire map like I did, which took a while, but once I learned it, I did enjoy it. But it's like to get to that point is not satisfying like it was on Origins, you know? While the atmosphere is a 10 out of 10, the gameplay to go along with it drags it down significantly. Yep. As it's simply too much all at once. 107 really total on spawn shot locations. Surviving long term. Yikes. But even with everything I just said being true, it still never had a fair shot because Treyarch didn't even bother to promote the fucking map. 
Talk about a giant. Chat, you know who promoted Dead of the Night more than Treyarch did? Oh my god. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> no way! No way! No way, dude. Chat, that literally says it all. I don't even need to explain it. The numbers are right there, dude. That is insane to me. Absolutely wild. Mess. Then the Holy DLC 2 shit. comes along, Which, despite how unsuccessful oh. Dead of the Night was, ended up giving the community one last bit of hope. There was actually a trailer this time, and it was mighty impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, Ancient. I don't remember the Ancient Evil trailer. Can I be honest with you, chat? Damn. Okay, so, dude, at least this trailer got more promoted. What happened to the thumbnail here? That shit got cut off. At least it got more prom promoted than anything else. I mean, yeah, and the reception here was pretty positive when it first came out, dude. But still, even then, you look back at the comments and everything is so confused. But look at this comment, dude! Wait, they're underground? We finally got it. Burry 2. <laughs> the top comment is about Burry 2. Burry 2 had more hype than Ancient Evil. Honestly, dude, that just goes to evil. show. The final chapter of the Chaos storyline takes place in the ancient city of Delphi, Greece. As the crew snaps out of their psychedelic trip to Nine and enters the city with a passkey they obtained from said trip. There's this broad called the Oracle, who's actually that no good Medusa, who misleads the crew into freeing her by completing the Easter egg and killing Perseus. Poor guy was just trying to protect us. Medusa's ultimate plan was to lure Scarlet here and absorb her knowledge. Wink. Which for whatever reason allows her- Chat, all I remember about this map is yo kiss. <laughs> That's like, like, dude, everyone's like, dude, the story was so cool. It was the end of- or it was what they were trying to do with the end of chaos. All I remember is on Twitter, everyone just was like, yo, kiss. That's all. <laughs> That's the story of ancient evil to me, dude. Let's go, dude. Yo, kiss and bury too. I mean, that's that says something right there. To open up the library and gain total power over the world with that magical zombie material from the Didn't Spectrum JC artifact. start that shit? JC? Chat! JC had more storyline implication than the storyline of Chaos and Aether itself in BO4. JC created Yo Kiss for Ancient Evil and Is This Playable in Togdra Toten. I remember those two lines more than any line in any Black Ops 4 Zombies character that, that anything that they've said ever. I remember Yo Kiss and Is This Playable more than anything that any of the characters have ever said. That is insane. That is insane. Meanwhile, Alistair and the cult are anticlimactic. Oh, wow. Turn stone not to ever be heard from again. What a sudden turn of events. It's at this point that the chaos storyline I know, peaks. dude. It's almost it like it's finally predestined. finally gets interesting and captivates us. And so naturally, with the peak being the very end, it felt disappointing. Which is, of course, ironic since the beginning felt boring, thus disappointing. You have to know a little bit about Greek mythology to fully... Chat, could you event. imagine if this story started off in Ancient Evil? Could you imagine, dude? It's just like, it makes you really realize that BO4 was not the YouTuber's fault. Not anybody else's fault. It was literally a culmination of different errors that basically ruined everything for zombies. At least afterwards, I guess up until Cold War, I guess. I don't know. Which, if you don't already, is actually a really good incentive to do a little research because the lore is actually Why fast. the fuck would they make the Easter egg set go underground? I don't know. Maybe Barry did that. <laughs> and that's the most iconic part about Buried is when you start above ground and you jump into the hole, into Buried. <laughs> These fucking dudes, bro, come on. It provides a really unique and exciting map concept. The Lost City of Delphi is visually stunning and is all the more impressive in the COD Zombie format. Treyarch's always had a way of seamlessly combining their mode with some of the most fascinating locations out there. I mean, come on, Alcatraz, the Pentagon, the Moon, and now Ancient Greece? Badass. The lore trickles down to just about every aspect of the map, including- They said course, the, the real Delphi design. was under, why not make the Easter egg? It's the same thing, dude. Where's the OG staffs? Where's the original 1.0s? We do not know. We do not know. The boss zombies, you know, the Pegasus, Spartoi, and Giganese, and the four elemental wonder weapons based on the gods of Himera, Gaia, Ornos, and Karen. 
These gauntlets are actually quite easy to obtain and are extremely powerful when fully upgraded. And the gauntlets are fire. Are I do have to say, the gameplay of Ancient Evil is phenomenal. It's just, there's, I don't understand the story. I remember, <laughs> chat, can I, can I say something so sad to you, right? I'm gonna go full screen for this. One in the chat, if you've ever seen Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. This, I can't believe I'm about to say this out loud, dude. I remember more <laughs> story. <laughs> From the Greek gods in Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief movie. The shitty movie. Then all of BO4. <laughs> that is so bad. I'm not lying, chat. That's the worst part about it. I remember that more than literally all of BO4. In those shitty movies that the author said he didn't even like, dude. <laughs> The best zombies map of all time. I can't believe, like, you know that's what I'm saying. Story is just, I can't, I can't feel for the story in these zombies games, to be honest. At least for chaos. Like, that is so fucking sad to say out loud. But for me, it's the truth. It's sad. West revolving around the story Jeez, of man. that respective god. This blueprint- and The garden scene where all the statues are frozen point. people? Dude, when they go to Las Vegas and they take the lotus flower or whatever, the Medusa scenes? I remember that more than anything from BO4, bro. The origins of Darius and Drac most notably, and is a format that seems to always work given the variety and replayability value it adds to the map. Among the tanky, four-armed Giganese and the admittedly irritating the Sparge Warrior are the returning Catalyst Zombies and Blight Bosses. And so Ops. while the boss zombie yeah. variety can be overwhelming, you have much more at your disposal to fend them off with the additional Pegasus Strike and Apollo's Will Shield. I also appreciate the duality of the The gameplay of this map was sick, map man. Split into two I do Delphi, like it. Where you spawn, and the River of Sorrows in the center of the world, which yep. you enter on the back of the Majestic. The map the is so sick. Visually, the gameplay, the great. Each other Story, we do here, not know. But share equal value. The Hydra. Delphi has three of the four perks Dude, in the literally. Sentinel Artifact, whereas the Dark Side has Pack-a-Punch, with each side also containing two of the four gauntlets. After the initial trip over, teleporters conveniently connect the two sections, making the entire map easy like to chat. reverse. Like chat, if this game had BO3 mechanics, the gauntlets would be the best four set wonder weapons of all time. It would be better than the staffs. It'd be better than the bows. It would, like they are quite literally statistically better than the staffs and the bows. It's just that they don't have enough ammo. So if you had the BO3 all chemical system in this, It'd be perfect. It's, you see what I mean? It's like every little thing was sort of misaligned so that it just wouldn't add up with BO4, man. It's so sad, dude. Pretty much everything about this map is good between the story, atmosphere, and gameplay alike, making it one of the more complete and frankly great maps BO4 has to offer. I'd say this map and Nine are the two universal favorites of this game, which I is agree. ironic given Voyage and Dead of the Night are universally hated the most, making true. it even split amongst the chaos. It, it literally is, that is so Hell, true. Even the ether maps we got are like that. Blood of the Dead was a huge letdown, but uh, that ended up being solid. It just goes- Chat, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think there was a good ether zombies map in Black Ops 4. A good one. Not even a great one, a good one. There wasn't. Like, it's just because the remakes that it's just like, it doesn't, it doesn't go to that next level. Blood, trash, classified, good, like good, but not, insanely good to the point where I remember it. Same thing with Tog and then Alpha Omega exists, you know? So there's never a great level of Zombies map on, on or Ether Zombies map on BO4, which is why, in my opinion, no other Black Ops game can say that. No other Black Ops game can say that. Black Ops 1 has iconic classics. BO2 has iconic classics, even with dumpster fires as well. But the iconic classics of BO4 are the chaos maps. That's the worst part about it, dude. When it was literally supposed to be Great War. Sadness, dude. It goes to Sadness. show how up and down this game is. Sadness. There's a constant shift in momentum between all of these maps, making it really hard to assess as a whole. So far, it's gone two chaos maps, followed by two ether maps, followed by the final two chaos maps. I wonder what the final two maps are going to look like.
We left Rock <laughs> the Moon final two the chaos maps. Cruise at the end of Classified, who then continue their mission uh, here at Camp Edward. The more I watch about Alpha Omega, the more I hate it. Like, chat, do you guys hate Alpha Omega 2? I just... Ah, some people like it, but I just can't stand this fucking map. AKA... Dude. I Nuke Town. Hate this map. Yes, dude. the seventh iteration of the most this... overdone map in COD history returns no. once again. We're all totally stoked and not worn down from this whatsoever. What's interesting is that this is the first Alpha, map Omega, or Blood. Anyway, I hate them both. Two different playable. Neither. Crews, both the younger Please. and older versions of Richtofen, and Nikolai Dempsey and Takio, which is pretty cool, but also a tad confusing. If you recall Revelation's ending, you'll remember that Monty sends them back in time, thus continuing You have to choose cycle. one, All man. The no, I hate the them both. Eddie, but in this alternate timeline, they never got there since we never went to Garad Grovey, thus leaving only these two. The timeline skews in Blood of the Dead when the Canorian pages change. Chat, what do you guys like yeah. better? Alpha, Mega, or Blood? I'm curious to hear what chat says. I don't even know how I could answer that. To be honest, like, I hate them both. I literally hate them, like, equally as bad. To be honest, though, like, if I were to go back and play one right now, I guess I'd play Blood, because just because of, literally because of chat, I know that map more than Alpha Omega. I don't know how to do Easter Egg on Alpha Omega to this day, still, without looking up a guide, or without chat telling me. I just don't know how to fucking do it. Only one whose soul wasn't snatched, in charge to break the cycle once and for all. It doesn't take long for Monty to notice this, and so he enters panic mode knowing that if the cycle is broken, his very existence will follow suit. And so he goes downstairs and kills These Maxis, but not scenes. before Maxis teleports the children to Camp Edward. A truly noble sacrifice to save his daughter, and humanity at large. The crew now needs to complete what- I'm gonna go out and on a limb here and say Maxis could quite literally be the most disappointing character in all of Call of Duty Zombies. For this man to be hyped up for like eight to 10 years, for him to die in a fucking drawing cutscene, actually disrespectful. I agree, dude. So fuck, like what an L. What an L. Call the Agarthan device in order to restore normalcy in the world, and obtain one of the components by defeating Avogadro in the Easter Egg. The Victus crew, who have been stored in Richtofen's lab all this time, are once again whored out by Richtofen to grab the final component of the device. With the device now complete, there's only one more thing left to be done, and that's the total elimination of our beloved characters as their very existence, due to their exposure with Element 115, interferes with the world's restoration. It's a reality Richtofen could never face, as he wanted to avoid killing himself and his- It is going to be so sad in the future, chat, if Call of Duty and Treyarch can never make better characters than these characters for zombies. I'm actually going to be extremely sad if they cannot craft a better set of four than Primus and Ultimus. It, it it literally will make me genuinely so sad because it's like in my opinion a well-written story of four could be better than these four their story is good but it's like you can write a better story than this dude i don't know i don't know chat i don't know i maybe it's me being too optimistic but it's like we'll see now best friends at all costs but by ignoring their true fate all he did was continue their miserable cycle. Nikolai faces this reality, however, and sneakily poisons the drinks of all of his brothers in arms, killing his best friends for the greater good of humanity, knowing there was simply no other choice. He then hands a gun to Sam, who then finishes him, laying waste to the eight men, both Primus and Ultimus, the best zombies map who of had all not only grew an intense bond with he one another, but you and I. The players who have been on this journey for the past decade. Chat, you know what's the craziest part about this cutscene? This is the end of all of Ether, right? And you know what are the three words that I remember the most for the end of all of Ether? The three words that I remember is, is this playable? I can't remember a single fucking quote of this shit other than is this playable? That is so fucking sad. Everything Element 115 related is banished to the Dark <laughs> so forever. Fucking Humanity sad. is finally restored to what it once was, and the children are now granted normal lives. It may not have been the most oh. glamorous ending, certainly not the most glamorous cutscene quality, but its emotional impact on the players can't be denied. 
as it was a really tough pill to swallow knowing that not only were our beloved crew put to an end, but the zombie storyline at large. It stung, but was absolutely necessary. The story could only be dragged out so long, and so Treyarch opted to put an end to it before our heroes saw themselves become the villains. Before arguably the most captivating story in video game history lost its special touch. Ugh, Though I'm not so against sad. how the story ultimately so panned sad. out, I certainly think the gameplay of these final two maps, DLC 3's Alpha Omega and DLC 4's Togder Toten, left a lot to be desired. I agree. I'm lumping these two maps it's together so because they're sad. actually very similar and share many of the same good, but more so bad qualities. Both maps are of course remakes, Alpha Omega being yet another Nuketown remake, which was pretty much it's copy and so pasted from Black Island, Togger Toe and reimagined Call of the Dead. Side note, I love the final map being German for Day of the Dead, contrasting with the very first map, Night of the Dead. It wraps the whole thing together beautifully. The unoriginality of these maps trickle into the gameplay, as neither map seemed to be eager to innovate in any significant way. Chat, like, here's something that I don't understand, right? Do you think that Treyarch could have hired custom mappers to make better maps than Alpha Omega and Togger Toten? I literally think they could have. I, and that is the saddest part of it all, is that they literally could have just hired custom mappers that are already doing that shit to this day, years later. And it's wild to think that this could have not happened. You know, look at Leviathan. I mean, exactly. That is insane to me to think, you know, it takes a lot of work, but dude, it's like, it, it, I understand it takes a lot of work, but it's like if Treyarch outsourced, cause they've outsourced in Cold War now, if they outsourced for BO4, I don't think anyone would be complaining, dude, you know? And it's not like they have to do everything, like all the models and shit. Obviously not. But if they outsourced, easily, dude. You know? So, I mean, it really depends, man. Treyarch on Deadlines 2. Honestly, I just think it's all Activision's fault. Like, this game is probably just another effect of Activision just being so bad at what they do. And truly, chat, if there's anyone that doesn't deserve anything, it's Activision. By Starting far. Most notably, the Wonder <clears throat> Weapons. Alpha Omega's Wonder Weapon is none other than the Ray Gun Mark II. But this time, having four elemental upgrades. Refreshing. Don't get me wrong, they're super fucking cool, but I'm not gonna let that cloud my judgment. The bottom line is, they're highly unoriginal. Which True. also goes for Tog's Wonder Weapons. Let's take a look at what they've got. The Thunder Gun exhilarating the tundra gun why didn't they just stick with this one instead of why is the tundra gun just the snowflake thunder gun dude <laughs> what the fuck man Both. and this wonder Waff scavenger hybrid whose name is so difficult to pronounce i simply won't do it they're not particularly bad but not particularly great either which makes them and definitely not wonder weapon suitable for being the final map ever no mega lol fuck you dude even harder to wrap my arms around the boss zombies follow suit, as in both maps we get lightning hounds, which are no different than regular hounds, the most common boss zombie ever, and nova crawlers return, granted in slightly different form, but uninspired nonetheless. Oh, and how can I forget the electric zombies? Okay, so both maps are giant recycling bins, but what about the core mechanics? Well, <laughs> Alpha Omega's power system consists of turning four gas valves- Could that quite literally be the- I think chat Alpha Omega has the worst power and pack punch system. I think in any zombies map, to be quite honest. Worse than Zetsubo. I, th I actually think it's probably the worst power system ever made. It's so bad. It does not make any sense as well. Not only turn off at random throughout the game, but switch locations too, which might just be the most infuriating way to keep the map charged. Tog doesn't want to feel left out though, and decides to take the one power switch Call of the Dead had and multiply it by three. How is this an impression? Tog's is not as bad though. Tog's, at least you still hit it and it's done. Alpha Omega is just improvement. Tog trash. does have a few key differences other than its gorgeous atmosphere though that I think elevates it above Alpha Omega. And that's the Hermit, 
Challenges, and Golden Pack-a-Punch, which only appears in short spurts, but only requires you to throw your gun in there once for the standard 5,000 points instead of having to do it five times for the same effect on all previous maps, which is less of a benefit and more of a fix of what was a major flaw in the game to begin true, with. I wouldn't say true. Victus is a benefit either. Each of these maps no. expand upon its predecessor with various new areas of the map and convenient means of transportation with the teleporters and zip lines, respectively, which I'll give it credit for, but with everything else being unoriginal, it doesn't quite ring the same way. These two maps aren't bad, but reek of mediocrity, which made the last legs of this game wobbly. Well, also chat, I wonder if the Modern Warfare engine also fucked Black Ops 4, as well as Fortnite, because like I said, everybody always forgets that when this game came out, Fortnite was popping, and Call of Duty was getting even less attention than usual, and then on top of the game being worse, it was just even less, dude. So there were so many factors for this being like one of the most hyped games ever to one of the most dead games ever, which is insane. There you have it. The giant mess. Makes me sad Black every Ops time I think about it, dude. It was a confusing the tug chat, of war boys. between a largely uninteresting so chaos storyline and the classic so, story so line sad. limping to its grave. Though I generally had fun with this game, especially with the new Russian gauntlet crying, modes, man. I'd be lying if I said this game didn't feel filler, since we really should have gotten the Great War finale back in BO3. Instead, we got this slowly animated cutscene, and though we got four original Chaos maps, the other four were all remakes, essentially checking off whatever maps hadn't yet been remastered with Zombies Chronicles. It's one thing to have one or two remakes in a game, but when half of the maps are remasters, it just goes to show how uninspired the game as a whole was. True. As if they made it because they had to, not because they were super passionate about it. I mean, this is why Cold War and Vanguard exist, literally because they still don't know what they're passionate about, which is why, like, chat, I always say, if there's a future where Deviation Games and COD 2024 both suck, I'm literally gonna cry. But it's a very high possibility. It could literally happen, you know? I mean, it is sad, but like, it is what it is, dude. Development behind the scenes was shaky at best, and a lot of the resources were poured into Blackout, but it doesn't change the fact that Treyarch is a AAA studio, and they did have a good amount of time to get it all done. I think the hardest thing to accept about this game is the fact that it's actually not so bad in a vacuum, devoid of context. But unfortunately, it followed up far and away the most successful Zombies title to date, making it pale in comparison. The True. engine was clunky, the base mechanics were mostly downgraded, the maps weren't even in the correct order, there was a lack of true innovation, and the game had an overall identity crisis that not even BO2 could hope to match. This game was the breaking point for so many long-term fans of the mode, as the gameplay was subpar and the story got way too confusing for any casual to follow which wouldn't have been such an issue if the game hadn't prioritized it so much. My friends and I created some fond memories with this game, and I always appreciated custom mutations allowing me to manipulate it to my liking, which I did for this video if you somehow didn't notice. But I've got to say this game was a complete and utter mess. It was an underwhelming way to wrap up the past decade of what was an otherwise spectacular mode. Damn. Pepe Pains, boys. I'm so sad. Honestly, every time I watch videos about BO4, it just makes me so fucking sad. Because it's just like, dude, it could literally be so much better than it is. Fucking zipline glitch, dude. Um, yeah. F's in chat, boys. Like, literally, I literally feel so depressed after watching that shit. Because I'm just like, dude, like, it is unbelievably sad how much that game literally, f to this, this day... To this you know, day, fucked up zombies for everyone. For everyone and everything. It's wild. The best it is map actually time. wild how much it fucked it you up know, for Black Ops 1. But I mean, chat, it is what it is, dude. And we just gotta power through it.